You know, I can't even blame Brooklyn for this. Do I think they should have let him go? Uh, no, of course not. I mean, he very well could have blossomed into what we've seen him become now over time. And considering the situation that Brooklyn is in, they honestly had nothing to lose by keeping him and letting him play. I mean, you're giving Spencer Dinwiddie playing time, but you let my man Yugi go. This man Yoshi got Dallas out here looking like the 2011 Mavs. Since his 10-day contract, the Mavs beat the Cavs, the Spurs. I mean, he just dropped 32 points on the Blazers, including tying the record for threes made in a game by a rookie with nine. I mean, they're 4-0 since picking Yogi up. That's been basically had the amount of wins that Brooklyn has this entire season so far. I wish I was kidding when I say that, but I'm not. The Brooklyn Nets, y'all are 9-41 and 41 with no first round draft pick this year, no first round draft pick next year. I mean, it's rumored that the Nets had some of their higher ups meeting in a freaking Starbucks to discuss their trade assets and what they should do going forward, and you let Yogi go. If I'm a Nets fan right now, I think I've just reached my boiling point. But like I said, even if you let Yogi get the minutes and touches that he's getting in Dallas right now, he's still might not have become this good for you guys already. Sometimes it takes a player being pushed to the edge of basically being cut from the league to bring out their potential. I mean, you look at Jeremy Lin and Hassan Whiteside. Those are just a couple of recent examples of players who had a sudden breakout similar to what Yogi is going through right now. But now let's take a look at Brooklyn. I'm interested. What do you do if you're the Brooklyn Nets at this point? Like I said, you have no draft picks for the next couple of years. You're not going to get any big name free agents to come play for Brooklyn. Any free agents you do get, you're going to have to overpay. So what exactly do you do if you are the Brooklyn Nets? Well, here's what I'm doing. First off, you trade just about everyone you can, especially when it comes to Brook Lopez, since he's just about the only person with real value. For what though? If you can get any draft picks at all, then that's golden. Other than that, I'm looking for more hidden gems. At this point, you're looking for a come up. You gotta scrape the other team's gutters for players and hope they become something valuable. I'm talking about you're looking at the 14th or 15th man on the bench for other teams. After that, I'm going to the D-League and handing out 10-day contracts just about everyone. I'm making it rain 10 day contracts in the D-League. Like I said, you got to find a come up and the D-League is where you go to find some come ups. And to be honest, this is just about your only real option. You're not going to get a lottery pick for Brook Lopez. All these teams that are headed to the lottery to get a high pick, they're not interested in Brook Lopez. And the teams that are interested, actually, I'm not even quite sure what teams are interested in Brook Lopez. Now, he's a great offensive center. He, he really is. But that being said, I'm not sure if anyone is in need of Brook Lopez's service. Back to Yogi Ferrell though, it's good to see him getting a chance and making the most out of it. He's for sure going to get a contract once these 10 games are up and hopefully he continues to ball it like he's been doing. But guys, really just pray for Brooklyn and their fans. You know, they could really use it right now with all the Yogi hysteria going on around the league, knowing that uh, their team is basically screwed for the next uh, couple of decades and they gave him up for nothing. Uh, yeah, pray for Brooklyn. Other than that though, it's time to get into the other recaps from last night's games. That's funny. I literally just got notified on my phone that Yogi just signed a two-year deal uh, with the Mavericks. So, you know, congrats to him and spam up the comments with Yogi Goat. But now back to the regularly scheduled program. <laughs> Three undrafted players starting for the Mavericks now, and all three of them lit up the Blazers last night. 108 to 104 is your final score. Like I said, Yogi Ferrell led all scores with 32 points on 9 of 11 shooting from three, tying the NBA record for most threes made by a rookie in a single game. The other undrafted players, Wesley Matthews and Seth Curry, is also at games though too. Wesley Matthews with 27 points, and Seth Curry is continuing to show that his Curry bloodline trait is starting to activate as he drops 19. <laughs> There is so much young talent in the NBA that is actually ridiculous. And right up there with the best of them is Nikola Jokic. The Serbian GOAT returned last night from his hip injury, and I didn't think it was possible, but apparently it is. I just made a video talking about who should win the most improved player, and I said if he continued to play like the way he was playing before he went down with the injury, that he should win. Well, he came back, and he didn't play as well as he'd been playing. He somehow played even better. Check this out. Yesterday, the man already had a great game at the half. He had 17 points. 10 rebounds and 6 assists at halftime and he finished the game with 20 points, 13 rebounds and 11 assists. I'm telling you guys this is a future legend. A couple of other future legends are Giannis and Jabari though. They both played pretty well last night. Jabari with 27 points and 11 rebounds and Giannis with 23 points, 8 rebounds and 5 assists. But they just need a little more help as they fall 121 to 117 to the Denver Nuggets. Luckily for them though help is on the way as Chris Middleton says he will make his return to the floor on Wednesday. <laughs> 
Devin Booker has that clutch gene. I'm telling y'all, once he reaches his full potential, it is a wrap. What is this, a second game winner so far on the year, and he's only in his second year in the NBA? But if I were to mark his cousins, though, I'd be upset. Once again, you do absolutely everything in your power to get the Kings a win, and you, and you still come up with an L. A triple-double of 22 points, 12 rebounds, and 12 assists for cousins. But like I said, Devin Booker stole the show with 33 points, including a game winner. And he has now scored at least 20 points in his past 15 games. The Rockets survived the Jimmy butler -less Chicago Bulls in overtime last night as James Harden almost has a triple-double with 42 points, 12 rebounds, and 9 assists. And for the Bulls, Michael Carter-Williams was having himself a game too. Hopefully though, he can stay in one place for a while as he's just never had any continuity so far in his young career. He had 23 points, 9 rebounds, and 6 assists before falling out for giving James Harden a piggyback ride. James Harden almost had a triple-double, and Russell Westbrook did have a triple-double, his 25th of the season actually. 38 points, 13 rebounds, and 12 assists from Westbrook as the Thunder get the 114-102 win over the Grizzlies. Kyle Lowry's back finally gave out after trying to carry this DeRozan-less Raptors team another game. Look, I'm trying to wait until DeRozan comes back to see if the Raptors can start winning again before I make a video talking about them. The Magic got the win though, 102 to 94. Evan Fournier returned for Orlando and dropped 20 points and so did Serge Ibaka with 20 points, 12 rebounds and 3 blocks. Quick question though, apparently the Magic are now looking to trade Ibaka. I know, crazy right? But do you guys think he's a good fit for Toronto? Let me know down in the comment section below. The Lakers and Celtics were tied coming into this game for most wins in NBA history at 3,252 wins apiece. And this was the tiebreaker. And this was the tiebreaker, and now the Celtics hold the title for most wins in NBA history. Isaiah Thomas did it again though. How he keeps doing it? We may never know, but he done did it again. 17 of his 38 points were scored in the fourth quarter as the Celtics get the 113 to 107 win over LA. The Pistons got their second straight win. <laughs> you know it's been a rough season when that excites you. But they got the 116 to 108 win over Minnesota last night on Marcus Morris's career high 36 points. Also, John Lewis set his career high with 24 too. You'll never guess who won this one. Take a while, get, actually don't. Actually, let me stop talking about Brooklyn before they break their losing streak by blowing out my Pistons. All right, the Pacers got the dub with a 106 to 97 win. Paul George and Jeff Teague both scored 24. 24 points and 11 rebounds for George and 24 points and seven assists for Teague as they continue to look more and more like the team some people thought they could be coming into the season. And that about wraps up all the action for the day 102 recap of the 2016-2017 NBA season. And now it's time to get into the player of the day. Yesterday, you guys selected Tim Hardaway Jr. and his 33 points, including 23 in the fourth quarter alone as your player of the day. And here are today's nominees. There are quite a bit more than usual. You have James Harden in his 42 points, 12 rebounds, and 9 assists. Russell Westbrook in his 38 points, 13 rebounds, and 12 assists. Nikola Jokic in his 20 points, 13 rebounds, and 11 assists. Isaiah Thomas in his 38 points, including 17 in the fourth. Or Yogi Ferrell in his 32 points and 9 threes. As always, you guys can go vote right now on the Amino Hardwood NBA app. The link to the poll will be in the description box below. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Leave a like on it if you did and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already for more daily NBA videos. And until tomorrow, keep getting the bugs, Team SDC, and I'm out of here. Peace!